Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie, and I believe that all readers should read children's literature, especially adults. So that's what we do on the Kid Lit Love podcast. We celebrate all things children's literature, picture books, early readers, middle grade, and young adult novels too. Whether you're an adult reading to your inner child or connecting the young readers in your lives with fantastic books, you've come to the right place. Each week, we'll talk to a different children's literature author and discuss their books, their hopes and dreams for readers, their writing process, and much, much more. So grab a notebook to build your TBR and let's get to today's episode of Kid Lit Love. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Kid Lit Love podcast. I'm Stephanie, your Kid Lit Loving host, inviting you back for another weekly conversation with a children's literature author. This week, I'm talking with Ritu Hamnani about her debut middle grade novel and verse, Lion of the Sky. This book was an experience. I had to stop and catch my breath multiple times to not only soak in the beauty of the words, but the emotions on the page. I cannot wait to talk to her about it today. So we are just jumping right in. Ritu, welcome to the Kid Lit Love podcast. I'm so glad you're here and I cannot wait to talk about this book. Well, I am thrilled to be here and that was the most wonderful introduction. So thank you so much for having me. <laughs> you are most welcome. And while I'm really excited to talk about the book, I need to wait just a minute because I wanna give you a chance to introduce you uh, to, to listeners and to potential readers. So I wanted to start, rather than just an open-ended, tell us about yourself, I really want to ask the question, have you always loved poetry and verse as a child mm -hmm. and kind of moving up into that? Or I figured I want to start there because the, as I said, the the beauty of the language, the placement on the page, oh, it just stopped, it stopped me so many times and I thought I've got to ask her is this has this always been a thing for you <laughs> well the answer in a nutshell is a resounding yes um growing up in Hong Kong which is the most vibrant of energetic cities in Asia um I would always write poetry whenever I went on public transport. And so I would take the Hong Kong Star Ferry and it would glide along the Hong Kong Harbor and I would write about all the interesting people I saw or I would trundle along a Hong Kong tram uh, as it went through the streets of Central and I would write about all the interesting sounds and smells. And one day I was sitting at the top deck of a moving double-decker bus as it snaked up its way to the peak. And I wrote a poem about my feelings and that poem won me a first prize in a poetry competition in school and a bunch of money so oh. I discovered that I could win money by writing poems and that was a great encourager and that was the incentive to keep writing and so I just kept entering poetry competitions and I kept winning. So oh. at university, I I won two tickets to Paris. Uh, then I went on to become an English and drama teacher and I won furniture vouchers and cinema vouchers and cinema tickets. Uh, and then I became a mom of three and I won an Xbox. So <laughs> it's uh, it's been a very useful uh, little little habit that, that seems to follow me. I just I just kept winning and so I just kept entering and to enter you had to write. So I just right. kept writing. And you kept writing. Do you have, I, I love when I get to ask this question as it comes up naturally in a podcast, do you have a certain notebook, a special kind or something that, you know, you keep with you for those moments or did you? I, I just love knowing that too. Like, where do you collect all of this? I, I, I think I'm a guilty, I'm very guilty of having too many notebooks. I don't know if actually that's, it's a word to have too many notebooks, but it's I have not, notebooks. That, not here. Every, every. <laughs> Yeah, knowing what I know about you, Stephanie, yes. Uh, I have notebooks for everything. I have notebooks for my drafting my ideas. I have a little book that I carry around with me for ideas that I'm inspired about. Um, I have a book that I keep by my bed for the dreams. Uh, you know, as soon as you remember, I think you have about 30 seconds to remember a dream before it's gone. And so I, I'll write it down and I never wow. worry about forgetting anything. And I've started a new thing. I've started getting on public transport now and actually giving the different people I see a backstory. And so sometimes I'll be sitting across from someone and, and I will just imagine where they've come from and what adventure they're going on and I'll write it down. And it, sometimes it's very helpful putting into a story I'm working on. 
Oh, I love that. It kind of gives <laughs> new meaning to the people watching concept, right? Absolutely. Of developing Absolutely. The next stories. I never get bored. Oh, I love that. So <laughs> how how did that go from, you know, writing those poems, realizing, oh, I'm actually pretty good at this. People are giving me stuff to do this. How did that then translate into what came next for you? And, and ultimately here, writing novels in verse. Well, so I never thought I would go on to be a children's author because, you know, I mean, when you're a child and you've got famous people like Judy Bloom who are writing books and you just think, well, they live in those faraway places. And, you know, someone like me couldn't ever be an author because I lived in Hong Kong and I didn't know any authors who grew up in Hong Kong. Um, And I mean, I grew up in a conservative Indian family. So even going on to become a teacher wasn't something that I saw in in the pipeline for me. And actually, when I went on and decided I was going to be a teacher, I had to convince, it was a battle. I had to convince my my family to let me go ahead and pursue this career in teaching. Um, And they turned around and said, no, 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 Cindy, women don't go on and teach. They they do other things, you know, they get married or they they work in a business or, and so, you know, going on to do this was the unimaginable dream. Um, But I was teaching and I was reading and I, I, sidelined into journalism and I get to interview incredible people like Gretchen Rubin who I know you love as well yes I was Um, so excited to see that (laughs) (laughs) um and then I one day my eight-year-old daughter asked me a homework question and it was that question that changed everything her question was why do people migrate it was a simple homework question but it led us down a rabbit hole where I started explaining our family history and explaining that our family were involved in the biggest mass migration in world history at the partition of India in 1947. And when I told my daughter that over 14 million people lost their homes and over a million people died, she was fascinated. And she asked me to take it to the library so that we could find some children's books on the topic. And we found children's books on the world wars and the Holocaust, but not one single children's book on the partition. And my little girl put her hands on her hips and accused me of making the whole thing up. And it broke my heart. Yeah. And I decided I had to write the book that we couldn't find. Oh, okay. Now, now emotion on the page, emotion in the podcast, that, that is why we need everyone to tell their story. That's why these books are so important. Yeah. And, and, oh, so your love of writing, your love of poetry, and the kick in the pants that you needed from your daughter <laughs> ultimately brought this book to That's life. Right. I and love it. So I I actually started off writing um, a self, I self-published a book, a picture book, um, because I was told that writing an age, getting an agent was like winning the lottery. You know, it was just almost impossible. And so I knew how hard it was going to be. But at the same time, at the back of my head, I kind of thought, well, I have a pretty good track record of winning things. So if getting an agent is like winning a lottery, I think I may have a chance. But um, I didn't have the confidence for that. So I I self-published a book. And I'm so glad I did. I learned so much about the world of publishing. But after all the research I did, I had so much information, everything I needed needed to come out of me. And I had started reading books in verse and, and I just fell in love with so many, uh, Inside Out and Back Again by Thana Lai, Other Words for Home, Jasmine Walker. Oh, one of my favorite, cro- yeah. Crossover by Kwame Alexander, The Red Pencil, Andrea David Pinkley. There were so many, and they just hit me in the heart. Just in a few words, I was transported into the shoes of a child, into their heart, into their hopes and their dreams. And I just thought, yes, this is the vehicle. This is the way I want to tell this story. Yeah. Um, and so that was that was the challenge. And I said, and you know, when you find the right format for your book, I'm convinced that it just flows. Yeah. Because it really did. It didn't take long. I mean, it did take long, but it, 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 I just wrote it. It just, it did come. And the poetry just, it works. The melody, the patterns, the, uh, the, the rhythm, the cadence, it all came together. Um, and, it helped to explain the raw emotion, the anguish, the resilience. It all made it vivid and relatable. And, and, and what I love most about verse is that it's not always what is said, but it's almost always what is not said. And you have to be so clever as a writer. You have to drop just enough breadcrumbs to keep your reader hooked. But you only give them so much detail because 
what they can create in their imagination is going to be so much more vivid and colorful than what you're ever going to write in your black and white words. Right. So right. it was finding that balance. And it was also the white space, giving readers that ability and that space to bring their own connections, to bring their own associations and understanding um, and fill in the blanks. And it becomes a very collaborative experience between reader and writer, very interactive. And it's, it's magical. So it I think that's magical. where the, that's where the power comes from in verse. Yeah, it is magical. I, I love all sorts of different formats as a reader. I love epistolary novels where they're written back and forth in letters. I love books that have multiple perspectives over the chapters. Um, but there is something, like you said, so magical, so emotional, so I don't even know the word I want, almost transformative that when you are reading a novel in verse and, and I, I didn't quite think of it that way, but you're right. It is the white space. Mm. It's the expansiveness of the me, the words that are on the page. Yes. But then what we do with them yeah. as a reader. And I feel like verse invites that in, at least for me, even more than a typical narrative page. And as I said, I had to stop more than once throughout your book to just yes. to just sit to just be to digest to, be, to think to digest yeah. to wonder yeah. to feel to yeah. feel like I'm... like my heart was feeling a lot of a lot of things and yeah I love how you just kind of put it together of how verse I think invites that the same if not even more in my opinion than than a regular novel and I mm. love that once you figured that out that was your your medium then off off you go yeah and and I love verse because it's a wonderful type and style of book for reluctant readers because they feel so accomplished because there's this big thick book and they've gone through it in half a day or or a day and yes and you feel like you can get through it so quickly but the power of verse and the power of the structure of the page that you can play with, the punctuation, all of that, it it helps you slow your reader down at the right moments. And and they want to slow down. Yes. Because they're they're digesting and they're absorbing and they're feeling and they're immersing themselves. And it's this wonderful experience they're having. So that you can finish the book and go back and then start again and go through it again because you want to have all those experience, all those ups and yeah. downs and 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 grow with the reader. And every time you go back, it's a different experience and it's magical yes. which by the way I did with your book so I, I read it the first time and then I have I am a quote collector I just love uh -huh. lifting lines that really matter to me and so yes. I went back first and just collected all of the quotes that I had gathered and then I went back to the parts that once I got to the end started making earlier parts pop out a little yes. bit more as all yes. the things were connecting together and so yes I was I was doing the <laughs> Page turning back and forth, all of the writing, all of the things. Um, you and I are kindred spirits, I think, Stephanie, because I do. Yeah. I don't know anyone else who does that, but I do. I'm a word collector. I write down if I like something in a book. If it breaks my heart, I will write it down. Yes, I love that. Well, yeah, you know, writing, and and you know, as someone who has written for a long time and collected notebooks, and it it cements things, at least for me, in a way that just thinking about them don't. And I feel like if I write down those quotes, if I write down those parts that matter, that book's part of me. Like I'm forever yeah. changed after, I am forever changed after reading your book for sure. Oh. But oh. writing it down just helps me hang on to them more than if I just read it and, and moved on. It's, it's That's more, beautiful. yeah, more. Yeah. More. I love that. I feel like at this point, we have to tell listeners a little bit more of what the book is about because we've been talking <laughs> around it. It's in verse, it's powerful, it's beautiful, it's, it's you know, breath stopping. I feel like we, we need to give them a, a bit of a background specifically of what Lion of the Sky entails. So could you, could yes. you give listeners <laughs> a little overview? And we don't do spoilers, so tease them all you would like uh, of oh, what Lion of the sure. Sky is. Okay, so... So Lion of the Sky, it's a middle grade novel in verse about 12 year old Raj and his family who are forced to become refugees following the partition of India. And Raj, he loves flying kites with his best friend Iqbal. When he flies his kite, he feels free like India will be. But when a British lawyer draws a line across a map, splitting India in two, Raj is thrust into a fractured world where he must start over in a new country. 
And after he suffers devastating losses, and I won't say what they are, right. he must then summon the courage to survive the brutal partition of both his country and his heart. And so the, the dominant themes in this book are those of identity, belonging, and the most important is hope. Um, and I will quote from my Kirkestad review that I'm very proud of, which says, this is a tale about being lion-hearted, soaring after falling many times and still reaching for the sky. It's also about lines that divide, that cut across hearts and countries, and that are seared into memories. Um, and I thought that just summed it up so, so perfectly. That's beautiful. That was a beautiful summary. And I feel like you've mentioned a lot of a lot of what I think about when I read children's literature, especially, is who needs this book? Like, who do I want to pass it along to? Whether it's the teacher that can then pass it to students, whether it's right to the child themselves. And I really was struck by how many entry points a reader could have in, in your novel. There are, you know, obviously the, the rich history that's there. Kids who want to know, need to know about this period of time and history. There are threads of friendship. There are threads of parent-child relationships, of sibling relationships, of bullying and being brave. And I think my favorite, just believing in who you are and that you're good and that you're enough and that you are special and it's okay to be whoever that is. And I, as you were talking about your story earlier, saying you kind of had to convince your family that this teacher thing was an okay path, I thought, oh, I see where that came up in, in, <laughs> in the story um, yes. Taj as well. So I feel like any reader, no matter who they are or where they are, will will find either themselves on the page or see something they need to see uh, in one of these pages. There are just so many places for readers to dive in, I think. Oh, thank you for saying that. That means the world to me. Yeah. And I've I've collected a few quotes that show that, that I wanted to share with listeners. Yes, I think if I, do. if I drop some of these lines, um, they're just going to run to the nearest bookstore. And <laughs> um, I think... One of my favorite parts, well, I can't say parts, I guess I'm going to say theme, um, is really finding who you are. You know, what is it that you want to do, you want to be, you want to stand for, you want to feel? And what happens if what you feel about that on the inside doesn't always match up to what others think you should do on the outside? And I, I really that journey that he was on really was so clear for me. And there's one quote um, related that it's on, a, it's on a sticky note right over there, actually, <laughs> even though listeners can't see it. It was this. It seems only fair that every one of us should be given a turn to make magic. And I loved it. Your own kind of magic, whatever that magic was. And I won't reveal how, how it turns out in the, in the book, mm -hmm. but I, I just, I loved that theme of, you know, these are young kids trying to figure out what's going on and how they want to show up in the world with all of that going around, around them. And the mm -hmm. fact that there was so much hardship in the book, but you still had that magic throughout. You had that balance throughout. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> I don't know how to make <laughs> me feel both things at the same time, but you did. And that hope oh. that you mentioned, that hope mm. was in that magic. Mm. One of my favorites. Oh, wow. Well, you know, what's amazing is that every time I meet someone who's read my book, they tell me their favorite poem or they tell me a passage and every time it's different. Yeah. <laughs> and it's incredible sure. how it's always a different poems relate to different people. You're the first person to mention this one to me. Okay. And, and I love it. I love I love hearing that it that it touched you that it impacted you. And in it very much is Raj and his story of who he is and his him trying to discover who he wants to be. Um, and I love that you get that. I love that you you felt that and that you can see that celebrated in all children because it should be. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting that we all do pull away different quotes mm. based on what our experiences are, maybe what's going yeah. on us in the moment. And 
what I love about it is that if I reread it in a year, perhaps it's a different part of the story I need to yep. read at, at that at that point. It could well be. Yeah. I've got one that I loved around the friendship theme. And there were, I would say, multiple dimensions of, of friendship throughout throughout the book. And this one, I can't really give context to this one because I don't want to spoil too much later, but I'm just going to say the line. Um, and it said, having friends can help the fractures in your life heal faster. The tears came down at that one. Radio. Uh, <laughs> the tears came down at uh, that one. Mainly because of the context around it as well, which I, I won't reveal, but yeah. that one went that one went right to my heart. Oh, thank you for sharing. That's beautiful to know. And I've got to just say two more because the, the three themes that really came for me were that being who you are, that friendship, that relationship connection. But I also was really struck by the bravery needed and the courage that sometimes Raj didn't feel he had and he felt shame over um, that in the end he kind of came to terms with. And there was one line that he was saying to someone else in the book and he said, you can't fix yourself by breaking someone else. I don't even know how to follow that up. <laughs> Is that powerful? You yeah. can't fix yourself by breaking someone else and then it continues as if that weren't powerful enough it continues because we don't need your kind and my kind only kindness and then I cried again oh <laughs> <laughs> well you know what they say they say tears in the writer tears in the reader so probably every time you cried was when every time I cried writing it yes <laughs> And that's the message I really hope that is coming through to the listeners who are listening. The emotion, the emotion that you feel first from the page and then in yourself as a reader, it just gets all mixed up. And I think that's what makes it such a powerful reading experience that takes it from a reading experience to a life one. Because you can't, you can't go back. You know, when you read about something that perhaps you didn't know about. You didn't know the full story. You didn't know how something in history impacted a group that is not you. You don't know what you don't know until you read someone's story, whether it's fictional or reality. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Mm. You can't just close the book and go on with your merry day. Like there's, there's, you're changed by it. You're yeah. changed by it. And the emotion just magnifies I think that effect, and I, I, I do. I've been sitting with this book for, for a while, and wow. I can't get it off of my heart. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, I'm overjoyed and touched and just thrilled to hear all of that. Yeah. That that is the dream of every writer, right? To hear that, and especially yeah. from someone I admire so much and someone I've, uh, you know, connected with so well. That's very special words that you're sharing with me, Stephanie. So I do thank you. You, you are most welcome. They are so well-deserved and I'm grateful to be able to say them kind of in person, right? Zoom mm -hmm. calls are, are pretty yep. in person, at least now at this point. <laughs> and that's what I, I want listeners to really take away. This book is so many things, so many entry points, so many places for adults, for kids to find themselves, to find something new, to figure out who do they want to be? How do they want to show up when something gets hard? How do they want to treat others? What do they want to be known for? What do they want to stand for? And also in the book, there is this theme that I think, especially to adults, just this theme of transformation out of that challenge. And again, I don't give spoilers, but oh, I was so proud. I was so proud of that family and every, oh, it's just... There's so much, there's so much in this book and um, yeah, listeners, you just need to read it. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me how much of it was true, you know, and just about every instance I wrote about stemmed from some truth that I, that I heard about from firsthand. And, and it was elders that I spoke to who were speaking about their memories for the first time, because up till this point, 
there's so many partition survivors have carried the shame and the blame of partition and not wanted to speak about it uh, because it was seen as a loss. It was seen as a devastating hardship. And there are too many associations of the deaths that were experienced, the family members that, that we lost along the way. But along with all the hardship and the loss comes all the strength and the courage and the resilience that I think needs to be celebrated. I mean, the generations coming out of us now need to know how strong a people we are to have survived. I mean, my own family members, the whole of their homeland, Sindh, was given in its entirety to Pakistan. So to, you know, to be told that your entire homeland, the generations you've known growing up, the neighbors, the families, the friends, your whole world uprooted, you're uprooted from it. You have to take what you can carry and flee not knowing where you're going and your parent, your family has invested money into the heirlooms and the tapestries and the marble furniture. And you can't take any of that with you. You can't, you can't take your friends with you. Um, and you have to have the courage to start over again. I can see why people wouldn't want to speak about that, right. but that they have found the courage to speak is so important because this is the legacy. This is the heritage yes. to give to, the next generations to know that, hey, if my great grandparents and grandparents had the courage and the strength to overcome that, then I can do anything. Yes. And when I look in the world today and I see the same crazy political tensions, the same religious divides, the same unnecessary uh, sort of misunderstandings that take place and cause all these religious and political uh, difficulties, struggles, the, the hatred that goes on, I can also think and learn and, and maybe we can become a more inclusive society. Maybe we can move towards peace um, and conflict resolution and empathy so that we can start helping one another, start forgiving one another and actually find a world that's united and move towards a better place. What a beautiful message that can start with a book. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. What a way to wrap everything up. I I so enjoyed our conversation. I do want to ask before we leave, is there anything that you're working on now that you might be able to sneak tease a little bit? <laughs> yes. Well, I'm working on a new middle grade novel in verse, which I'm really enjoying. Um, and there there is uh, there have been thoughts and questions for a sequel. Um, of Lion because I did leave some of it on a bit of a cliffhanger and there are a lot of my husband came a to me and said I need to know he's like I need to know what happens you need to write the next yes. one so that you know mm -hmm. there have been talks about that um and I'm working on lots of different picture books, which I'm loving. And you know what? There's so many things that I'm interested in in the world. I'm so curious about so many different things that I, I want to write about everything. And it's, it's really exciting. But I definitely have more to say about partition. So eventually you will hear more from me on that front. But yes. can I just say thank you? Thank you so much for everything that you've said about my book and, and just for loving books the way you do. Everything you do for the Kidlet community, Stephanie, oh. you're you're a bright shining light and we are so appreciative for you. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listeners um, can't see, but my, my smile is cheek, you know, <laughs> ear, ear to ear over here. And I would just say, so my website is Um, You can find me on my website, uh, on Instagram. I'm author Ritu Hemnani. On Facebook, I'm Ritu Hemnani author. On X, I'm Ritu Hem Writes. And on Blue Sky and LinkedIn, I'm Ritu Hemnani. So you can find me and follow along on my journey on any of those platforms. Wonderful. And I will make it easier for listeners. I will link to your website, to all of those platforms you just mentioned, as well as direct links to this beautiful book as well. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so thank you. And listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of the Kid Lit Love podcast. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Kid Lit Love podcast. You'll find links to all the books, resources, and ideas mentioned in the show notes at alitlife.com. And if you want more, you might like to listen to my other podcast called Get Literate. It's a podcast that explores all things books and reading, notebooks and writing, and everything in between to build a life you love. One more thing. 
If you love what you listen to today, please take a moment to rate and review the podcast or take a screenshot of the episode and text it to a bookish friend. This helps the podcast grow and builds our bookish community of kid lit love. Thanks for listening.